So I mentioned I was going to talk about a little bit this later. On the back of the concert program, I put some information about music education and why music is important. And if you've been to one of the parent meetings and things that I've done at Hopkins, you may have heard some of this before, uh, but I know a lot of you haven't. Um, participating in music education in school is a very unique thing. There are a whole bunch of things that students learn, skills that are acquired, that you can't get anywhere else at school. Um, you can't duplicate them outside of school. You can't, there, there's no substitute for it. Um, and, you know, I'm lucky I teach at a school where a large percentage of the school population participates in music. Uh, that's not true in every school. It's definitely not true in every school in Fremont. You know, maybe it should be. Um, but the, um, the, there's lots and lots and lots of research about how, you know, students score better on the SAT tests and do better on standardized testing and the students who study music, you know, higher incomes later in life and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I put some of that on the back of the program. There's some interesting things. So for instance, like the College Board um, is the administrator of the SAT and they put out this report at the end of each year, which is this big, thick thing. Um, with anything you would ever want to know about people that took the SAT test and how they break down and what they did. Um, they actually break down people that took instrumental music uh, in secondary school, which is seventh grade and later, by how many years they took and what that did to their SAT score. So people that took um, you know, zero years got whatever the average score was. This is you know, nationwide. And then they say, well, what's the difference between that and you know, less than one year? Which is like, I don't know, it's negligible. And then, what if you took two years? Well, then it goes up a little bit. It's about, you know, 15 or 20. By the time you get to the four years or higher, it's up to, you know, a number of like 123, I think, is the most recent one. Um, that's a big jump, and that's nationwide. Um, they also track things like, what if you play music outside of school, like at a youth symphony or private lessons or study piano or something like that? It's not as impactful. It's about 20. It's not 120, it's like 20. Um, and, you know, there's all these things you get in the music class that, like I said, you can't get anywhere else. Um, and, you know, music students just have this huge advantage over everybody else, and the longer they stay with it, the more they get it. And the more people that get the advantage, the better the whole school is. It's not one of those, you know, well, if somebody else does it, then that's going to lower my chances of being good at it. Well, that's not true at all, right? And in fact, the more people this, that are in music classes at the school, the better the school music programs are, the more benefits everybody gets from it. Um, so just as an example of that, we're going to do a little mini demonstration for you. So when you play in a group of music, like a wind band behind you, or a string orchestra and ensemble, um, so you have to play right notes, you have to play at the right time, you have to play at the right speed, you have to follow the conductor, you have to play at the right volume, you have to play in tune, you have to play with good sound, you have to play, and, and that's just kind of a start with off the top of my head. All those things have to happen through your head at once. There's nothing else like that. Um, there was a study, I think it was a Japanese study, where they actually like mapped the brain to see how much of the brain was used during a whole bunch of activities. And playing music in an ensemble was the only thing that used this, the, almost the entire brain lit up. Uh, nothing else even came close. Things like you know playing basketball or you know, flying a jet or uh, right, nothing else even came close to it. And just the amount of concentration that it takes. The other thing that's true about playing music is it requires a certain level of perfection, right? If you go to school and, you know, if you get 95% correct or a grade of 95% in like, you know, your AP chemistry class in high school, that's pretty good. If you play a piece of music 95%, it's very interesting. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a very, very small chunk of the next piece, Sanctuary by Frank to Kelly, and um, it's a very small chunk. We're going to play it correctly for you. And then we're going to play it. We, I sat down with a calculator and figured this out. We're going to play it at exactly 92.6% correct, which is an A. That's, that's actually pretty good. So here's what it is correctly.
that's correct, except for the other two clarinets. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, this is 92.6% correct. strongest music programs in the state. 
It could have been. And there are a lot of really good things happening in Fremont, and I'm not trying to you know, downplay that. So that's my challenge to all of you. 